Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Borderline Too Much Fun podcast. I'm here with Josh, Gizum's web designer, and what else do you do? What else do you do here? Uh, I direct creative things. That's awesome. Okay, um, so today we're going to talk about internet local listings, which is things like Yelp or even Google Business, Facebook, uh, sort of like where you get reviews and places that link to you. And we're going to answer the question of, are they actually worth it? Because they're kind of a pain. They're not fun. Yeah. We don't really like them. But before that, I am going to dare Josh to tear this stack of 2014-17 magazines in half. These are going to represent a phone book. Um, and this is going to represent the passing of time. And I don't know. I don't know. I just... I love it. So scientists have said it's impossible for a human being to tear a phone book in half. No one can to do it. Why is it impossible, though? Did... <sighs> okay. I'm not gonna you can have one more try. You know what we'll go at it? You can't get it started. <laughs> <laughs> Just give a little, a little tear on the edge there. How we win, Harry Kazo? We cheat. Nope. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give up. All right, well, we'll come back to it. You'll give one more try. Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, okay, so do you have any questions about internet local listings? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm a business owner. Is okay. it worth my time to sign up for a local listing? Say Yelp, Google Business, Foursquare. The list goes on. But yeah. is it is it worth my time? Generally, I'm going to say yes. If you're a small business, mostly because you get a lot of really good backlinks. And backlinks are one signal that Google uses to determine if your website is like legitimate and worth visiting. Mm -hmm. um, to the other side of the question, like will you get traffic from those sources? Probably not. Maybe from Yelp, uh, probably from Google Business. Everybody should have a Google Business. Um, maybe from things like Foursquare, I don't know. But yeah. generally the smaller ones, you're, you're not gonna get any sort of traffic directly from. But you're gonna get the benefit of being seen as a more prestigious website for existing on them. I see. Mm -hmm. um, so there's so many to choose from. Mm -hmm. How do I pick which ones, what to focus on, and how many should I sign up for? Yeah, I mean, I would always recommend starting with Google Business. That's going to be your most important one. Um, beyond that, if you have any industry-specific listings, um, there are a lot for like manufacturing. There's definitely a lot for medical providers where they, you know, rate my doctor and things like that. Um, anywhere that you can get your name listed is going to be awesome. That's going to help. Ultimately, I would say sign up for as many as you possibly can, uh, as your sanity will allow for. I know it's tedious and it's not very fun to do, but if you spend 10 to 15 minutes a day for a week or two, like you'll, you'll, you'll get 10 sure. decent backlinks, sure. which are good. Um, in the past, I've seen some of these local listings just create a profile for a business mm -hmm. or someone else does, what they're, they're allowed to. How do I, can I manage all of them? Because I think it's, or is there one, one place to manage all of them? So there's a lot of services that you can sign up for. Uh, we manage it here, but there's also, you know, there's places you can go that will manage the top 50 to 70 local listings. Okay. And that's going to be like your go-to ones like Foursquare, Waze, IMAPs. Google business, like all of those things. Yeah, it's not gonna hit any of your industry specific ones, which are, if you have them, if you have a lot of them, those are gonna be probably the most important to your business because those will lend the most authority to you. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely like subscription-based services that you could sign up to. Awesome, that's really helpful. So how do I figure out like where my local listings are at and like what I need to check on? You know, do I just, do I just Google myself, I'll Google my business and see where I pop up? Or you can do that. That's a start. There's also a lot of free services that you can go to. Uh, I know Moz Local has one. Uh, Bright Local has one. SEMrush, I think, has one. And they'll just kind of run a scan of your presence across the internet. How you doing there? You can't just tear the small one, buddy. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's all or nothing. Oh, did you answer the question yet? I got distracted. Okay, I'll be I'll, honest. I'll stop. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of services that you can use to to, to gauge all of them in one go. You don't have to go through and like individually curate each and every one of these things. And so what can I do if I don't have the time to look through all these places to find where I'm listed at? Or I don't have the resources. Maybe I don't, yeah. you know, don't understand fully where to look. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously you can hire somebody to do it. There's always going to be somebody out there. You know, KZoom is happy to do it for you. Um, if you don't want to do it personally, I would definitely recommend at least do Google business. At least get a Google business going because that's going to be your most important one. The other thing is, like you said, sometimes places will auto-generate like mm -hmm. locations for you. I know yeah. like LinkedIn does this and like Yelp will do this. Um, it's easier to claim a listing than it is to create a listing. So like you could save a lot of time by just going in and saying like, yes, I own this business and then quickly proving that you own the business and okay. adding all to your website and all that. That's great. Yep. Do you know for sure, I mean, this doesn't have to go in the real podcast. Yeah. Do you know for sure if, if you sign up, let's say for Google business, it's obviously the biggest one, the most common one. Yeah. If you sign up for it, do other platforms create profiles for you just from that information? Because I think I've mm -hmm. seen that happen. There definitely are places that sort of just like, steal and repackage Google's information. I mean, okay, I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure like IMAPS does that. Um, sure. I think that there are a lot of companies out there that are kind of getting by just on finding manufacturers, for example, manufacturers, they might like look on Google business for every manufacturer in an area, pull it, put it into their database, do that for like 60 locations and then say, we're the world's largest database of like local manufacturers or something. Sure, okay. Which is, you know, whatever, but right. If right. you can get on it, you're good. Sure. Yeah. Do you have any information on what it costs and how much time it takes to get your local listings, you know, out there and mm -hmm. accurate? If you do a subscription-based service, it's going to be anywhere from like seventy-five to one hundred and twenty dollars a month, uh, and usually you want to run that for about a year. It takes time to kind of like propagate through that and make sure that none of your listings like sure. revert back to their old inaccurate form. Because right. the other thing is, is like you might have listings in a lot of places but they might list the wrong address like maybe they listed a phone number that you had when you like started the business and they haven't been updated since maybe they point to a website that like was just a temporary wix website that you set up when you first started the business it can be any number of things and you want to just make sure that they're all accurate all pointing to your website all legitimate information perfect mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah so in summary yeah in so <laughs> Let's not do this again. Bring the next season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a callback. Yeah. Uh, That's what we call a callback. Yeah. So I understand that local listings are antiquated. Like, they are basically like the phone book, which we're tired, you know, trying to destroy these, maybe symbolically here. Uh, but they're a little more useful than the phone book in that they at least, like, provide you a little power behind your website, a, a little more authority, a little more. They make you look more legitimate. Yeah, and and whether people actually see that as you know you being more legitimate, or if it's just Google like saying like oh, sixty people link to this website like that must mean that they're important, right? It's worth pursuing. Okay. It's it's worth going after that. Great to know. Yeah, great to know. And I'll help you. I'll help you rank better. You can't just tear one direction. <laughs> You're so powerful. I am so powerful. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. All right. Well, those also, are the hands of a man who types all day long. <laughs> well, in summary, we, yeah. it is impossible to rip a rip a phone book. Uh, Scientific. We proved it. We did. We did. Cool. Well, signing off. Thanks for listening in. This has been the Borderline Too Much Fun podcast. Hope you learned a little bit today about local listings, where to access them, and how to change them.